evening everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Selin Kesebir. I'm an assistant professor of organizational behavior at LBS and I'm teaching um, negotiations and bargaining and I do see some of my students here. Um, I'm happy to see you. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you today is a piece of my research and um, this is um, about a puzzle that um, we have been thinking about and trying to address and here is the puzzle here is the first part of the puzzle on the one hand um, women are generally seen as the nicer friendlier more sympathetic kinder gender right both by women and also by men um, along the same lines, people are faster to associate women with more positive words, more pleasant words such as good, vacation, paradise, and they are faster to associate men with less positive or more negative words such as bad, um, slime, and grief. So generally, we do know that people see women as nicer, friendlier. At the same time, um, there is a fairly common view that women are also mean and cutthroat when they are competing with other women. So this is evident in um, some book titles such as this one, um, Catfight and Mean Girls Grown Up. And catfight, by the way, is a term that is used to refer to women who are competing, but never to men who are competing. And more generally, women are seen to have um, relatively bad work relationships with each other. So here, uh, I don't know whether you see Cheryl, here mm -hmm. is um, Cheryl. So let me give you another example. Um, so this one is from um, the 2013 Wimbledon tennis tournament. And after this tournament, there were at least two um, commentators. Two is the number that I could spot. Maybe there are more. Um, there were two who did write about the relationship between women tennis stars and men tennis stars and the point of both of these um, commentaries was that women's relationships off-court relationships with each other was less friendly more caustic uh, generally less pleasant than men's off-court relationships with each other so this um, part this commentator talked to the players themselves um, he talked to um, a coach and um, the finding, the, the idea that um, he came out with was women are more likely to make public snide comments about each other. They are less likely to be seen practicing together and they are less likely to be um, friends in general. And now the question for us is if women are the nicer, friendlier gender, how come that they also don't get very friendly with their rivals, with their competitors? So. Um, this was the question that we started with and one idea was well maybe it's about the competition right maybe it is the competition um, that dampens the niceness a little bit and um, we started to look at gender and competitiveness and try to learn about what do we know <coughs> about that so here are some of the things that we learn about gender and competitiveness um, the first is that um, women are less competitive than men okay this is a finding that has been um, shown over and over so in their self descriptions so when we ask them how competitive are you men will say on average that they are more competitive we also find the same difference when we ask um, women and men whether they would like to be paid based on their performance in competition or based on a fixed rate right so for example um, you are going to perform a task. Would you like to be paid by the number of um, items that you have successfully completed, by the number of tasks you have successfully completed, or based on whether you have won over other people? Men are more likely to, be, to choose the latter one, even if it means that they will end up being paid less. I and mean, they don't know whether, they are, whether or not they, will, they would be paid less, but they are more likely to choose the more competitive option. Well, the question is, why would they do that? One possibility is that they are overconfident, more overconfident than women are overconfident. And um, there is some truth to that. There is some evidence showing that men are more overconfident than women, but it is not all. So um, here is um, a study that um, makes that point. 
a scholar um, talked to, um, collected data from 835 state legislators in the U.S. And um, this scholar asked them, if you run for Congress, what are the chances that you would win? And second question, what, are, um, what is the likelihood that you are going to run for Congress? Are you going to run for Congress or not? Now, ambitious um, female legislators thought they would run up for Congress if they had a good chance of winning. And that was about 20 percent. Right. So for ambitious male legislators, they said they would run for Congress if they had any chance of winning. So as long as it's not zero, they <laughs> said uh, we might run for Congress. And again, like below 20 percent, like if you looked at people who said they would run for Congress, and yet had less than 20% of chance of winning, self-described chance of winning, it was all male. So this suggests to us it's not just about the confidence issue. It seems like men just really like to compete. Now, um, all of that tells us that on average, women will compete less than men in the workplace. But what we don't know yet is what are the implications of their competition um, on their peer relationships with each other. Right. And um, to understand that, what we need to look at is um, the, rule of, the role of competition in boys and girls' peer relationships when they are children. And when we look at that, um, there are certain clear differences. Okay? So first of all, we do know that girls and boys are socialized in segregated peer groups. And these are really different cultures. Now, these cultures are different in terms of the um, structures. So girls generally play in dyads and triads. Okay? They don't tend to play in larger groups, which is what, male, uh, what boys tend to do. But they also have different kinds of activities. As you would have expected, boys tend to play more competitive games like racing, um, whereas girls tend to play less competitive games, such as playing house. And um, it seems that um, boys spend at least twice as much time in competitive play uh, activities as girls. Um, in addition, they also have a different kind of orientation towards each other. So boys um, tend to be more oriented toward establishing status within their groups and um, pursuing more agentic girls. Girls' um, activities tend to be more focused on supporting, helping, and being nice to each other in general. Now, um, part of that is also uh, being and uh, um, keeping the appearance of equality. So for girls' groups, um, trying to look superior than the other girl, um, competing with another girl, are not um, received well by the girls in the group. So I'm now going to show you a quote from an ethnographer who studied girls and boys. And um, she describes um, the difference with these words. So she says, boys seem to openly encourage statements about relative ranking although they, of course, may argue about them. However, a girl who positively assesses herself or explicitly compares herself with others may be seen as showing character and attitudes that the other girls find offensive. And the question is, would we see that in adults too? Would we see any parallel um, in adult relationships, adult period relationships, or adult uh, working peer relationships. And um, there is some evidence that that seems to be the case, too. Women seem to observe some conversational rituals that downplay their superiority and um, seem to serve to keep the appearance of equality. So here is um, a quote from another ethnographer who studied women in organizations. And she wrote, Women will expand effort to assure others that they are not pulling rank, not trying to capitalize on or rub, rub in their one-up position. In contrast, since men's characteristic rituals have grown out of the assumption that all relationships are inherently hierarchical, 
it is not surprising that many of them either see less reason to downplay their authority or see more reason to call attention to it to ward off inevitable challenges. Okay, so it seems like there are real differences um, in um, peer relationships in these two cultures, and these do have implications for the desirability and acceptability of competition. Right, so um, if competition, um, well, what competition does is by its very definition, it um, creates inequalities, right? So it dispenses with any, um, any sense of equality. And if equality is seen as a necessary integral aspect of relationship, as it seems to be the case for girls, then it can be disruptive to the relationship, right? In contrast, if equality is not seen as necessary, and if competition is seen as an ordinary, natural uh, ac aspect of relationships, as it seems to be the case for boys, then competition would not have any negative implications for boys or uh, men's relationship with other men, um, as we would expect for women's relationship. And these were um, the ideas that we set out to test. And I'm now going to show you three studies in which we tested these ideas. So in particular, we tested these two questions first. Is competition with same gender co-workers less acceptable, less desirable for women than for men? And second question, are women's relationships with each other damaged more than men's relationships with each other in the presence of competition? Okay, so these are the questions that we are going to address. So we ran three studies. Um, here is the first one. It was a survey on 127 currently employed adults. Okay? And we asked them um, first to tell us their agreement with the following <coughs> statements. It's not desirable to compete with other female co-workers, or it's not desirable to compete with other male co-workers. Okay? And similar questions um, about um, competing with other female co-workers is acceptable, uh, male co-workers is acceptable, and rights, right to compete with other female co-workers and it's right to compete with other male co-workers. So we got um, a score for each person um, by combining their responses to these questions. The R's here indicate that these are reverse scored. And um, what we found comparing male participants and female participants is that as we would have expected, female participants in blue were more likely to think that competition with same gender co-workers is undesirable, unacceptable, and it's not right. Okay, so this p-value uh, indicates that um, if these two groups, female and male groups, were identical, this outcome would be very unlikely. Okay, so this is the first piece of evidence that uh, women seem to be more um, they seem to think that it's less desirable to compete with their female co-workers. We don't find that difference for opposite gender co-workers. So it doesn't seem to be just an aversion to competition. It seems more like an aversion to competition with other females. Here is the second um, question that we ask them. Um, and this was to answer our second question. So we asked them, write down the name of a female co-worker and a male co-worker. Now, we also made sure that these were co-workers of similar tenure and position to them and uh, with whom they frequently worked. And then, about each of these two co-workers, we asked them, how intense is the competition between you and this person? And how much do you like this person to measure their quality of their relationship with that person? So, first thing that I want to um, report here um, from the study is that female participants on average reported a lower level of competition intensity with their same gender co-workers okay, compared to male participants. So on average, females actually do not compete or do not see themselves um, being competitive with their female co-workers as the males do. And this is a significant difference. Um, but coming to our particular question, now, let me orient you to this graph. So here, um, on the y-axis, we have liking for same-gender co-workers. 
And on this axis, what we have is uh, participants who are one standard deviation below the mean in competition intensity with their co-worker. And uh, on this side, we have participants who are one standard deviation above the mean in terms of competition intensity. So what we find here for male participants is, as we would have expected, this is a flat line. So whether they compete very intensely or whether they do not compete at all, there is no difference in their liking for another man. Okay, for them it doesn't matter whether they are competing with the other guy or not. For women, the more they compete, so the more they are on this end, the less they are reported, li reported liking for the woman. Okay, so for women, it seems that if they report competing with the woman, they like that person less. Now, if you look at opposite gender co-workers, so women competing, uh, so women reporting on men or men reporting on women, there is absolutely no effect here. Again, what that tells us is it is not a competition thing, it's competition with um, same gender co-workers for females. All right, second study. This time we had 161 adults with work experience. And this time, uh, what we did was, um, again, asking them how acceptable is it to compete with uh, co-workers, female and male co-workers, same questions as in the first study, and we again have the very same results. So what we say is we replicated the results from the first study. Uh, that tells us this is a robust finding. We keep finding it again and again. To address the second question, um, this time we did something different. We presented them with a scenario. And we asked them to imagine that they were competing with a co-worker. And this was going to be either a same gender co-worker or an opposite gender co-worker. So let me present you the um, scenario that we presented. So the scenario was um, Jenny and half of the people saw Josh. So um, Jenny is your coworker who has a similar position to yours in the marketing department at ABC company. Jenny has been competing with you at work. For example, she tries to finish her daily tasks earlier than you do. You also feel quite competitive toward Jenny because you know that only one of you will be promoted at the end of this year. Okay, so these uh, people are finding themselves in competition with each other. Now. Early this month, the department manager announced that he would offer a bonus trip to one employee who makes the best marketing proposal. Finding this chance attractive, you decided to make a proposal. A few days later, you learned that Jenny also plans to compete with you for this bonus trip. And the question for us was, um, how much would they think they like this person or they would want to interact this person, Jenny or Josh? Here are the questions that we asked them. We said, please indicate your um, liking for these people. And um, the questions were, my work relations with this person would always be strained. I would feel resentful toward this person. I would find it difficult to act warmly toward this person. I would try to avoid this person, and so on. So basically, um, generally, would you have a good positive relationship with this person or not? And here is what we found. Again, as we would have expected, the highest level of relational damage was reported by female participants who thought they were competing with Jenny rather than Josh. Okay? And everybody else uh, was reporting the same level of relational damage. Um, women competing with another woman were stood standing out here. Final study that I want to talk about today. Um, this time we brought people to the lab, okay, 104 adults, and we made them either compete with each other or cooperate with each other. So let me explain what we did. Um, we paired them with the same gender other person. So this time everybody is um, paired together with the same gender participant, and we told them you are going to work on a dot estimation task. So here is what the task is. Um, the task looks like this. We show them these pe pictures, um, like this one or this one, and we ask them, um, you have to guess how many dots there are on this one after looking at it for five seconds. Now, um, half of the participants were in the competition condition, and they were told, 
your scores will depend on your individual performance relative to each other. Each time um, the person whose estimation is closer to the actual number than the other person is going to get one point while the other gets nothing. In the cooperation condition, your scores will depend on your joint performance. If at least one of you gives an estimation that is within plus minus 10 percent margin of the actual number, both of you will get one point, and these points will then be used in a prize draw. Okay, so that was the setup. And now let me show you um, the results of the study uh, when we ask them to report their um, relational damage, same questions as in the second study. Here is what we found. Now let us first look here at this condition, which is the competition condition. Females are again in blue, and if they were competing, they were again reporting a significantly, this is a significant difference, statistically significant difference, um, higher level of relational damage compared to men competing with other men. When they were cooperating, um, actually women report a very low level uh, of relational damage. I don't know what is going on with these people <laughs> here. Um, this, by the way, is, um, so I'm only talking about three studies here. We ran um, a very, very similar study. Uh, we got the very same results, um, but this did uh, disappear in that second study. So this difference, um, males reporting higher relational damage when cooperating, that, that disappear <laughs> in that study. But um, again, now we have three studies in which we have shown um, the very same thing, right? So it seems that uh, when women compete with other women, their relationship takes a hit. And notice that this was structural competition. So this was, these were not situations where they were, um, they themselves chose to compete these people. That was competition imposed on them, at least in the um, second and third studies. Now, um, do these findings affirm some of the old tropes such as mean girls and cat fights that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk? Now the answer to that is um, they do not. So, and let me explain why they do not. So first of all, as I mentioned uh, when I was talking about the first study, on average women report lower competition with other women than men report competition with other men. Okay, so the average relationship um, a woman has with another woman is probably less competitive than a man's relationship with another man. But second, we have also seen that when women were asked to cooperate, they reported very low levels of relational damage. Now, if it were the case that women just cannot work together um, and they are competitive, then they shouldn't have reported low relational damage when they were cooperating, when they were asked to cooperate, yet this is not what we found. So what these findings show is putting the cause of the relational stra strain on the competitive environment and not on any inability of women to cooperate. Okay, finally, um, what are the implications of these findings? So the first one is um, competitively structured environments are not very conducive to thriving peer relationships among women. This is what this set of studies suggest. The second one is that um, these kinds of very competitive environments uh, may put women and their organizations at a disadvantage because we do know that positive work relationships, positive relationships at work are associated with multiple positive outcomes, both for the individuals and also for the organizations. And finally, um, egalitarian organizational structures uh, with more distributed leadership, more collaborative culture, may be um, better environments for women and perhaps some men too. Okay, I'll stop here and take any questions if you have any. I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the participants, the, the, uh -huh. the sample size is, is not small, but it seems relatively small. Yeah. Where did you get the participants from? I mean, what breadth of ages, what breadth of industries, what breadth yes. of geographies? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, so there are ways for us researchers to um, get participants. So in the lab studies, we have a behavioral lab at LBS. Uh, some of you may have heard about our behavioral lab, and you can, in fact, participate in those studies yourself. So you can sign up and you can participate in the studies. 
Um, so in the lab study, this is where we got our participants from, and um, they are mostly people with some work experience. Uh, they tend to be younger. For the other two studies, we used a marketplace, online marketplace for uh, employing workers. It's called uh, Amturk. Has anyone heard about Amturk here? Some of you may have heard about it. So basically, you can hire people there to do your tasks, and um, those people tend to have a wide variety of um, work experiences and we did not look at what is the effect of or what is the association between industry versus um, industry and um, other types of demographics with our outcomes. Um, so these sample sizes, by the way, um, they are um, not very large, as you have noticed, and in the social sciences, um, in psychology, and also um, in organizational behavior and marketing, which are related fields, now there is a movement, and some of you may have heard about that, um, there is a movement towards stronger replicability, stronger results, and um, a very large part of that is increasing sample sizes. Because um, when we have larger sample sizes, we can have more trust in our results. And um, let me also um, tell you, as I mentioned, um, I have only reported three studies here. We have um, more studies which uh, I did not report in the interest of time, uh, also with m more participants. And um, these are very, very robust results. So we did not run any study where we did not get these findings. Mm -hmm. Do we have time for any other question? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you think, what do you think the extent of nature versus nurture is in terms uh -huh. of the influence of the outcome? Yes, so I would um, not like to draw a distinction between nature and nature, nurture um, because we do know that um, they really feed into each other. So, um, for example, women and men, they do look different, right? I mean, physically, you can tell by looking at women's and men's bodies. Um, that one of them is a man and the other one is a woman. Well, the thing is, um, our brains are also part of um, our um, physical body and they also um, are somewhat different, even at birth. So it's not the case um, that people are born exactly alike um, and then it is the social environment that turns them into different people. So, um, and the evidence for that comes from studies um, where uh, some boys, um, for example, were born uh, without male um, genitalia. And um, these people were raised as um, girls, and yet um, you can read those accounts, and those are really, really fascinating accounts. Um, it turns out that these people knew very, very early on that something was wrong with them. So um, I am, um, the point that I want to make first is that um, there is clearly a nature part in that. Um, and um, th that doesn't, of course, mean that there is no nurture part at all. Um, those two interact oftentimes, right? And also people select their environment, which then shape them, and so on. So um, it is uh, probably both, but nature certainly plays a part. OK. All right. Excuse me, I have one comment. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's very important to dissect which segment they're coming from, which sector. OK. Uh -huh. Because I mean, I come from the oil and gas, which is men dominated. Right. Uh -huh. And what we've seen whenever we put women together, actually, they work better. OK. Uh -huh. So I think it's better. So the are they, you put them it. under competitive interdependence? They become, they don't, I mean, they become less competitive with each other. Okay, so the point here is, um, just to be clear, and I want to make that point very, very clearly. So the point, again, is not that women, when you put them together, they will not work well. So the point is, when you put women together, and if you create, for example, a rewarding scheme, where you will reward one or the other, then they will not work well. In fact, um, I mean, you are right. Um, your, your point is consistent with the first study results that I reported, which seems to suggest they can actually become more collaborative. And if you put them in, a, in cooperative interdependence, they may in fact like each other even more as are the results of our third study. Okay, thanks everyone.